This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. This is a video of techniques from this particular afghan, the Long Triangles Short Row Graphics Afghan. It's part of my An Afghan in a Day or Less series, and it's available as a digital pattern over at www.diananitz.com. Now this afghan, by using short row graphics, gives you a very striking geometric pattern, but you do not have to take the time and fuss with intarsia. It's fast and easy. It also has hems all around, which gives you extra width and very sturdy edges. Edges on blankets seem to get the most wear. We also have a very interesting corner detail on this afghan. Let's get started with the technique. Today I'm showing how to do a pico hem. I've taught this before, but the video is so old, it's not even high definition. And I thought I ought to teach this again, particularly because this works for my newest pattern, which is the Long Triangles Blanket. Now, I have brought out every other needle into B position so that I can do the waist yarn quickly and easily. I just have a small ball of leftovers. I'm on a bulky machine, and I'm on about tension six if you'd like to try this swatch using a group four yarn. This is a very fast cast on that I use very frequently. After I knit one row across every other needle, I bring out the in-between needles. I'm putting a comb on here. I'm putting a weight on each end of the work just to hold it down, and then knitting a few rows with this yarn. Sometimes beginners ask how much to knit. It really doesn't matter. This cast on will not unravel from the bottom. You'll find this cast on really useful because of that. Now, I'm not sure this is enough yarn to go across, so I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to put in one row of Ravel Cord. Now, my Ravel Cord isn't Ravel Cord at all. It's some slick rayon yarn that I've had forever. I also very often use Artiste Nylon Thread, which I get in spools with 300 yards. Then I can use all the Ravel Cord I want, and if I have a mishap, and have to snip my ravel cord, it's fine. The ravel cord is just a divider. It makes it easy for me to get rid of the waist yarn, which is just a stitch holder for getting me started. Because this is an open cast on that I'm going to do now, I'm just going to knit, and of course, if we pulled the ravel cord off, it would all fall to pieces. Now, the light blue is my swatch color or my blanket color if I was doing a blanket. And I'm going to knit the number of rows that go on the inside hem. You can make these hems as narrow or as deep as you like. I think if you don't do at least four rows, you don't get a very good hem. But I like to add some width to my blanket with these hems. And I'm going to do 12 rows right now. I think my recent pattern calls for 14 rows. What makes the picots is a row of eyelets. And let me show you the fast, easy way to do eyelets when you're on a bulky machine like this and you can't use a lace carriage to do it. I'm bringing out the needles that are going to be empty. Each of these needle spaces is going to be where an eyelet occurs. An adjustable seven stitch transfer tool. And this tool has had every other prong pushed down these are, are really nice for this kind of job. I can move four stitches at a time. That'll save a lot of time when you have to make picots all across the knitting machine. This works better if you have a little bit of weight. And of course, I put two weights at the bottom when I started. 
there is one thing to be careful of. I'll get a needle pusher and I'll make sure that all my stitches are still in work because if there's a needle pushed back like that, that will make a ladder. It won't be an attractive pico for the hem. Now I've done 12 for the inside of the hem. Now I'll knit 12 rows for the outside of the hem. It's time to pick up the hem. I'll get the hardware off and pull the fabric out and show it to you. Here's what we have. About an inch and a half of waist yarn, followed by one row of ravel cord, 12 rows of the light blue. The last row I made eyelets and then 12 more rows. This gets folded up this way and that makes the hem. Now all hems have one less loop on the bottom than you have stitches on the top. The reason is that the loops on the bottom are actually between the stitches. They're not stitches, but they're the loop between stitches. So, do not be distressed if when you pick up a hem, you're one stitch short. You're always going to be one stitch short. As I fold this end up, what I'm looking to pick up are the blue loops in between the pink ravel cord. So here's my first one and I put it on this second needle. That way when I get to the other end if I end up with a loop for all the remaining needles I've done just what I should have done. And these are easy to spot because the ravel cord is a different color. So always use ravel cord that is a different color and you can speed up and use two or three prongs at a time to pick up hems. You can remove waste yarn now or you can leave it on there until later. I have a tendency to leave waste yarn on a long time because if something isn't right, hey, the waste yarn is acting as a stitch holder. However, I'm going to show you how to remove the waste yarn now so that I can show you what the picked up stitches look like. So there I am getting my last loop and I tried not to split the yarn and I'll even push the needles back a little against, against the back so that all of the knitting is up against the gate pegs. When your knitting is pushed against the gate pegs it holds it in place better. Even though I don't have weights on, it's holding it in place. And then I can remove the ravel cord just by pulling. Now, sometimes your ravel cord doesn't come out and when that happens what you do is you just get a pair of sharp scissors and get in there and take a snip. Now my ravel cord's out and that makes the waist yarn fall right off, which is easy. I can rewind that waist yarn and I can use it again. Now this one's been used about 10 times and it's sort of permanently kinked. I will just keep using it. Now here is that folded up hem and you get a really good look at what you've done this way. One of the things that I often do with hems before I do the closing row, which is the next row, is I will pull the needles out into hold position, leave my machine set to knit all the needles even though they're in hold, and what that will do is make it a little easier for the machine to close the hem because it only has to lay yarn in and push them back. It doesn't have to pull them out and lay yarn in and then push them back. So there's my hem with the closing row. 
really an easy technique, super beginner technique. Most of the people who get my, my new pattern won't even bother to look at this. But it'll be nice to have a new video that's high def on this important and basic technique.